The reason for that war was actually premised on the economic wealth of our people. They came, the British people came for economic reasons. They came to, to steal what we had here. They came to take away what belonged to the Benin race. <laughs> Today's program is the most recommended topic among Benin population on our channel, the British and Benin War. In 1897, the British people invaded Benin Kingdom and dismantled the intricate administrative system that our kings have established for centuries. During the war, the upper of Benin at that time, Oba Ovorame, was captured by the British armies and taken to Calabar, where he was exiled for 17 years before he joined his ancestors. The war also gave preference to the British armies to loot thousands of Benin artifacts from the Oba Palace. The question is, what exactly exacerbated the war between the British and the Benin people? However, the British people have their own justification of why they invaded Benin Kingdom and looted a lot of artifacts from the palace. Just listen to this. Alright, this is where we're called Oba Overham Square. And so this is Oba Overham and Oba Isi sitting down in the course of a trial. Oba Overham and Oba Isi actually was the Oba of Benin. In the about 1896, sorry, 1895, the British people came here, represented by Captain Gower, Proconsul Gower. He came and there was a treaty that was signed between the British government and the Benin Kingdom. And so top on the list of that treaty was that Omonopa should stop the human sacrifice. And secondly, that every diplomatic relationship must be strictly tied only to the British government. Now, let me ask this. Was the Opa of Benin using human beings as sacrifice? Were the Benins using human beings as sacrifice? The answer is no. There is no way you can paint the Benins in a bad light. It is what Oberon did at that time. It's not different from what is being done today. According to the Constitution, whenever any man was guilty of an offense punishable by death, the person would die. For example, if, I know, if, I, if a man kills another man, will he not also die? Yes. That is the Constitution. Yeah. And that was the Constitution that was already on ground in Benin Kingdom those days. Those that were used as sacrifice were those who were guilty of crimes. Of, they were criminals or guilty of crimes. And so those criminal acts of theirs were punishable by death. And so rather than throw them away, I will, okay, let us call this one for the cause. And that was it. So as you can see, it's not different. So the British people did not understand the culture of the people. And again, if you look at it again, what was the reason for that war? The reason for that war was actually premised on the economic wealth of our people. They came, the British people came for economic reasons. They came to, to steal what we had here. They came to take away what belonged to the Benin race. They came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And then what happened? They already had all the things conceived in them. Because he that too, they had fought wars. They also fought, they thrown Jaja of Popo, Nana of Shakiri. They had incurred a lot of debt they wanted to settle. And they needed to make money. Before then, they had visited our palace and saw that most of those artworks were cut as restricted to the palace. 
And those artifacts were quite prestigious and they were valuable artifacts. That every diplomatic relationship must be strictly tied only to the British government. Why? Because the Portuguese already had a relationship with the Benin Kingdom. Well, if you look at the partition, um, okay, before the partition, they definitely, they were what powers compared to the Portuguese. The British people, they were more famous. As 1606, for example, when uh, 1630, that was in the 17th century when slave trade started. You remember the pioneers of slave trade were the British people. As at that time, they were the British people. And so they, they were what, as what powers they wanted to dominate everywhere. Consider the fact that one, a time will come when the side of our world were considered to them. In terms of, you know, in 1945, there was partition of Africa. There was seed, there was shared between the Francophone country, the Fr that's France and Britain. They shared, they shared it. Mm. Those speaking, uh, the, uh, the, the French speaking countries today in Africa mm. were once colonized by the French, by France. Mm. Why the Anglo countries like Nigeria, were colonized by the British people. And so, it, so there's every tendency that they wanted to dominate. Every tendency that before then they had come here and they saw the great wealth, the economic status of Benin Kingdom. And they were, the other ones actually motivated them to come down here. Within that period, this place was already their domain. It was already established that this side would belong to the British people. And so that, that was, it was in that capacity they began to, they were the ones in power actually. Mm -hmm. They were the ones in power. And so it was like every authority were under them. And they did everything possible to ensure that they overruled our tradition. Whatever we're doing here was secondary. And so they imposed everything on us, including their language. And the, the, the main reason why they came to Benin was as a, as a result of economy. It was not because they felt they were going to treat us well, they were going to take us in the, in the, in the, in the right direction. No, 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 no. They had seen our work, as I said earlier on. The Benin was rich in artifacts. We had what they called court arts. Court arts was actually, it, it began in the time of Obaewai. Extended to the time of Obaesige, who actually was the one who shed the artist into guilds. Obaesige was the one who founded Igwenomo, and today we have Igun broadcasters, and then Igbesama, woodcarvers. All those ones. So the British people had visited the palace and discovered that we had what they call court art. After them, artworks were restricted to the palace. Those were, that were found outside the palace were those that served as a watch to distinguished uh, uh, citizens within the kingdom. Yeah. And so they discovered that, you know, before then they had fought wars. They had fought against the of Bobo and the now of Shekiri. In fact, they incurred a lot of debt fighting them. Imagine coming all the way from Britain to begin to fight the coastal people within the coastal region. They had incurred a lot of debt and they needed to upset their debt. And they came to our palace and saw this beauty. They saw our priceless artifacts. And so they wanted a situation whereby they would have a local standard to get all those things. And they needed to fight with us. They needed to cause trouble. It, basically, it was not because they found that they wanted to, you know, they, they, they were only trying to be sanctimonious as if only had an endowed attitude to show that, not because they wanted to be holy or righteous, or they wanted to be decent, or not because they had, we were actually guilty of human sacrifice, 
But because they wanted an opportunity to loot, that was top on the agenda. A way of, of coming to take our economy here to build their own country. That was what they were looking for. Were they doing it in a peaceful way, trying to make a peaceful relationship with the Vinekeda? Mr. Green, it was a miss up. But most of the actions were actually concocted because they came giving us, trying to give us love, trying to paint the whole scenario as if they were doing us good. But at the back of their hearts, they came to siphon our economy. They came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. At the time they signed the treaty, Captain Gowick, I mean, Proconsul Gowick, went back. At that time, it was Captain Phillips that was in charge of this zone. And there was a time he had to go on vacation. And the man who had done for him was Captain Moore. And so as he went away, the report got to Captain Phillips that he, human beings were being used as sacrifice. And so that was the opportunity he wanted. As if the, the, we had gone out of the agreement. It was a breach of agreement. It was a breach of contract. So they now... You know, in 18, in 1896, when the news got to them, that was when Captain Phillips came down. When Captain, on his way, it was in December, Captain Phillips and his men came. There were seven of them. When they came and about 200 African slaves helped them to carry the, the property. And when they came down here, it was a period the Beninists were celebrating the World Festival. And it was a well-known fact that within that period, Benin's never welcomed any visitor, especially the white-skinned visitors that were regarded as Potuki. They were not. It was a taboo to help this kind of people in the midst when it was being celebrated. And so when Captain Phillips got to a point, because he felt he had some some grievances again, and that was what he was going to, he, he was going to unleash that. But what he asked, asked him, please hold on for a while. But you know what they did? The British people, through Captain Phillips and his men, they came with a flag, the Jack Union flag. They came with it to show that they were representatives of the British people. And they also came with a white flag to show that they had come for peace and not for war. But it was all concocted effort at supporting what belonged to the Benin people. Hmm. Now, on the way, they kept on waving the white flag. We are, we are here for peace, but that was not true. It was all concocted. It was all doctored. So what did the Benin people do? Today? Good, good. They all asked them to hold on. They passed to worry. The Olu of Ori even advised them, please, at this time when the Benin celebrate Agua Festival, you don't interrupt them. Now that they are asking you to hold on, please, kind of hold on. But then they began to showcase the, 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 the briefcase of superiority complex. They felt they were in charge. Captain Phillips became pompous and heady. And he felt that, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a representative of the highest authority. And so no... Nobody can stop them. And so he kept on coming. He kept on coming. And he kept on getting warnings. Please don't go, don't go. Until eventually they got to Wharton through the Sekewana Road as us. When they came, Captain Phillips now gave a, a, a young boy his staff. He was thinking that the other perhaps did not know that he was the one, the, the man in charge. He gave him his own staff to show the other. And when the, you know, the little boy showed the other the staff, in other words, this is the man we're talking about. He's the one who wants to see you, so you must see him. The other said, yes, we acknowledge that. Please let him hold on until our festival, after our festival. Then we can talk. Then we can dialogue. But this man became more impudent. He looked at him. When about 15 kilometers away, they were only about 15 kilometers away from Benin, when the Oba compostly sent Olobosere and Obaye, Chief Obaye, to meet them, 
They are not with those people. Find out where they had come. Obaye and Olobosere, who was a warlord in Benin Kingdom, he went, he had his gun. And when he confronted Captain Phillips and his men, they were highly, in fact, they were stubborn. Captain Phillips was very, very stubborn and insultive as well. You know what he said? He called the Obaye a local chief. I mean, why would, they, would, would, would a local chief like the Obaye tell me? And so, you know, to the Benima, the Obaye is like a deity. That became, <laughs> honestly, that one sparked off anger and, and gross animosity from, from, from Olubosheri. Without wasting time, he caught his gun. A what? Caught his gun and opened fire on Captain Phillips. Killed Captain Phillips. Killed all, the, all, all, all uh, uh, five, four other men. Five of them were killed. Only two of them escaped. Those two that escaped, they got to Sapele. And from there, they sent a radio message to you, to Britain, describing this, the, 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 the situation as very, very, very serious. Oh, <laughs> and the next thing, all the British newspapers, they all cried blue murders. And they were captivating captions that read us, you know, barbarians killed you know, authorities. Barbarians, they called our people barbarians. That was the way they screamed blue mothers. And there was supposed to be a dialogue. If they were, if they had come sincere, without sincerity, there would have been a dialogue. And least to find out to investigate, they, ne they never cared to do that. What they did was to wait until it was after the festival. Therefore, the following year in February, 1897, there was a military action from the British authority. The soldiers came through different houses. Some of them came through Boba Hill, some came through uh, Walton, down the Kewan Road houses. Those that came through Boba Hill, they met a marching one man called a boy Himi. A, 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 a boy Himi killed him with his magical power, but they soon subdued him. And those that came through Walton, they met a marching Asoro. Asoro incidentally had that's Asoro. Can you see Asoro? Yes. Asoro had a magical power that was not embedded in him. The power was actually in his shadow. And when the British soldiers saw him, they began to shoot. They came with their cannons of war. They came with their war, commiss yeah, commissioners of war, armament of war. What is this? That's one of their machine guns, the British. They brought, brought this. Oh, yes. So, so look, if you look at it, look at it. So I saw they began to shoot from all directions, but there was a boomerang. Whatever cannon the shot, boomerang at them. And so hundreds of the British soldiers died. And so they, because the people, these British people were resident oriented people, they eventually discovered the secret, that the secret was not in him. And the local people, our own people, his own people told them categorically that if they kept shooting him, they would, all of them would die. And they showed them the secret, the shadow. And so the next day, the battle started again. Eventually, one of the main soldiers just aimed at the shadow. And so Asuro cried out, they have killed me. And that was how the man, this hero, Asuro, called Asuro. They were not able to kill him. No, 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 no. Until they discovered that the secret was in his shadow. Asoro was a kind of a hero, a mystic figure. He fought British armies profusely and died as a hero. But that was exactly what happened. And so the man eventually collapsed and died when they shot the shadow. And that was when the British soldiers, in triumph, they started shooting into the air. And that was how they eventually found their way to the palace of the Oba. At the time they go to the palace, Oba Ovarame had already left the palace and took refuge in the house of Chief Obaseki Abu, who then was the ESL of Benin Kingdom. Mr. Obaseki? Yes, Chief Obaseki Abu. He was the ESL of Benin Kingdom. Hmm. And so, for a long time, they kept on looking for Oba Ovarame, in vain. Hmm. And the people, they kept on, if you look at this Chief Oba Iwada, he actually died a death of a hero. Why? Because wherever they went, they kept on capturing people. Chief Uso there was also arrested. You can see his hands behind. Uso. That's Chief Uso. 
Chibusho was arrested. And anywhere he went, they were in that search of Oberami. They were looking for Oberami. And whenever he went and searched the presence of Oberami, he would sing a song and many alerting him that the enemy is But they never heard what he was saying. And so until they were going to also arrest him, Obaiwana, the, that one there. Yeah. They were going to arrest him, but the man said, they cannot touch me. I can never ever devour the secrets of my kingdom. Obame cannot. I, it is not going to be me that will unfold where he is. And so rather than allow you to make me devour the secrets of my kingdom, I will die. He cut off his head. He killed himself. Oh yes, he killed himself. Instead of surrendering oh, yes, his he... Oba mm -hmm. no, no, no. to the himself. British army. Oh yes, he killed himself. So Chief Oba you wanna. And that was what As a hero. Yes, yes, he died the death of a hero. And so at the end of the day, when Oba Huran discovered that there was bloodshed in the land, he left the house of uh, of uh, Obasakiel. So then that himself, he was the one who gave up himself. He was not captured. I have said it time without number that Obaoveran was not never captured. There is no way the white man would have been able to detect where his Obato boy, no nyabu, I don't want nyabu no ye. No, he actually surrendered himself and said, "Please leave my people." He was a great Oba who loved his people. Leave my people. I was the one who I am the one you are looking for. Here I am, and that was how. He was arrested and then they began to try him. The government more had to try him. So at the end of the day, they said he was no longer suitable for the throne. He was subsequently deported to Kala at This is him. Yes, that's him. They treated him as a king oh, in yes. the court. He had been, been treated to given a royal grandeur. Mm. You know, flanked on all sides by his retinue of chiefs agonizing and then the British soldiers in triumph and the partners pardon straight to Calabar in the spot. These are the partners. Yes. The two partners. Yeah. Uh, these are the, uh, uh, the soldiers, the British soldiers. Okay. And these, the chiefs. One of the chiefs agonizing. Okay. In bitter mood. So as you can see, between 1897 and 1914, the, our Oba was in Calabar. He was in Ezra in Calabar. They saw that Prince Agoba Singh could not mount the throne. Well, because administration can never be in vacuum, that necessitated the appointment, the appointment of Chief Obaseki Ago, who then was the ESA of the New Kingdom. That's him. He became the acting administrator in Benin Kingdom. Because the palace was empty at that time. Yes. And the son, the true heir apparent to the throne, Agobasi, could not ascend the throne because the father was still alive in Calabar. <laughs> and so what, what, what eventually followed? Now, between 1897 is a period the historians call interregnum. There was interregnum. And in 1914, that same year that the Northern and the Southern Protectories were amalgamated by San Lugard, that was the same year that Otona Yorui, that is the euphemism, uh, the way that the, the, the euphemism, Otona Yorui, we don't say the Oba dies in Bin, the Oba does not die. I will Otona Yorui. In other words, the Orui is the Kaolin Chok, that the Benis hold in high esteem. And so the beneath the, the, the open here has been painted as that Kowlin chalk that is so prestigious. Now that same prestigious Kowlin chalk has been swallowed by the earth. Otona Yorwe. It's a mild way of saying that the Oba joined his ancestors. When he did, the course became so clear for the true heir apparent of the throne to inherit, to sit on his father's throne. And Prince Ago, he now stepped down. Eventually, he didn't resist it. Well, there were lots of things, there were lots of controversies that married. They said he resisted. He resisted. But if you, if that's the coming down, the coming down from power. But then if you look at it, it was like, it was also like an elite. 
He was appointed by the British authority. And so he needed to also get another instruction from the same British authority because they were still in power. In spite of the coronation, in spite of the fact that, yes, it, it, it was the, the son, the heir apparent to the throne, would ascend the father's throne, would sit on his father's throne and beneath. It became also apparent that he had to hear from his, those who appointed him. They say he who pays the piper, right? they text the tune. So at that time, I, don't, I do not think, in my own supposition, I think Chief Obasekiago should not be blamed for it. Because nobody can get so impudent to Omonoba. The, 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 the throne is respected by all our sundry. Yes. So our people, the Benis, they're loyal to the palace. So there has never been any form of betrayal. Nobody can betray Omonoba. Yeah. That is seen as a deity. The British government justified the war on the killings of British officials by the Benin chiefs and also claimed that the artifacts that were looted from the Benin palace by the British armies were seized for the cost of the war. It was very, very tragic. Oba Uvorane was taken to Calabar along with some of the chiefs in the palace where he spent 17 years in exile before he joined his ancestors. The chiefs that went to exile with him were tried in the kind of a court system. At that time, the colonial people, they established a court system in Calabar where they tried the chiefs. Up to now, the Bini people are still requesting for the artifacts that were looted during the war to be returned back to Bini. Next time, we're going to be discussing about the quest to return uh, Bini artifacts back to Bini. So that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching and uh, bye for now.